Hello, welcome to the Scanning Start of a Checkpoint Framework Extension tutorial series. And this is tutorial 3, Deploy your extension to SharePoint, aka Hello World Part 3. And this is September 2018 edition, so we keep on evolving the video and written guidance as we uh, release a new versions of SharePoint Framework to be available. So this is tutorial 3, and tutorial 3 requires that you follow it up on the tutorial 1 and 2. So in the tutorial 1, we create an application customizer, and we test that, that it works uh, within a live SharePoint site. In tutorial 2, we then extended that application customizer to take advantage of the content placeholders on a page, and then we tested that that's working properly in the site. Now, in this tutorial 3, we start the deployment process. So we start testing how the deployment of this solution actually works to a specific site, and how we would activate that extension to a specific site as part of installing or uh, installing the solution to the site from an app catalog. So let's uh, first of all uh, go to the command line. So if you have your uh, 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 local host running, so you could should do uh, and break the, the execution of that one, so you don't have anything running uh, in the command line. The next thing what we want to do uh, is that we want to actually go to our Visual Studio code, and then we want to concentrate on how does that extension actually get deployed uh, to the site. Now. In here, if I extend uh, the SharePoint folder, by default, as part of the default scaffolding, we actually created this element XML file. And we uh, updated this element XML file based on the settings which were provided as part of the, the scaffolding. So first of all, uh, we have a custom action with the title. Uh, title isn't actually, the custom action isn't really visible and title isn't visible. Um, we have a location which needs to be a client side extension to an application customizer when we are actually activating an application customizer in a specific scope. Then we have the client side component ID and this actually refers to the manifest ID of the component. So if I extend here my source code and we have a look on the manifest file of the extension, that ID is now matching on this ID in the manifest file. So basically um, that's now associating that this component should be activated on a site. And then we can provide obviously also client side component properties based on the configuration, based on the properties, what the extension actually supports. Now, what this element XML file basically means is that we will include this inside of our SPPKJ file. And whenever we install this solution to a specific site, we execute this XML file. And this is a feature framework element XML file, which basically means that we are adding or instructing SharePoint and add an entry on the SP web, SP site or SP list user custom action collection. By default, uh, this will be scoped on a web scope. Um, so the default scaffolding, default uh, packaging in the SharePoint framework solutions uh, in the Visual Studio, well, in the, 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 in the uh, Yeoman templates is always activating things in the web level. Technically, you can activate this uh, component also in the web level just uh, without having an XML just by running an API code as well. But this is the easiest way to do that when you're installing the, the solution to a site. Now, I'm not sure if you can remember, but when we started the tutorial series, there was a question related on tenant scope deployment. And as part of that tenant scope deployment question, we actually said, no, we do not want this solution to be a tenant scope deployed. And that means that the solution itself has to be explicitly installed to a site in the tenant to be able to light up the functionality. So there are multiple different other options available in SharePoint Framework, but this is the most basic scenario. So we're doing that in the tutorial. Now let's follow up on again on the written format. So for one thing, what we want to do is update uh, the property settings uh, for the client side properties. So in our case, the application customizer had two different properties. So we can actually see the properties here, top and bottom. And based on those values, we were rendering them in the application a customizer uh, or the placeholders on a page. So we wanna update now the element XML file, then have the, the right properties inside of the, of the value. And these have to be encoded because they are part of the XML structure. So now we can say that there's a top property and the top property value will be top area for the page and bottom property and that will have its own value. So let me save the changes. Now, 
There's another interesting file within this folder, and this is called client side instance XML. And this is something which is related on a new capability, which is part of the SharePoint framework 1.6. So technically you do no longer need to activate uh, the extensions one by one in a site. You can actually activate an extension from a one centralized location from an app catalog if that's based on your business requirements. So as an example, you might have a footer or um, uh, an header which you want to activate in every single communication site. And using this automation, which the SexML file actually provides for you, you can actually make that happen. In this particular tutorial, however, we're not taking advantage of the scenario. So for now, we can ignore this XML file and we need to modify slightly our package solution uh, definition to make sure that that file is not actually getting packaged as part of our solution. So let me actually open up the package solution. And in here, we can see the references for element XML file and client side instance XML file as well. So what we want to do is, is actually get rid of the client side instance uh, element here and uh, the comma and save the settings. And this basically means that even though the XML file exists uh, in the file system, we're not going to package that as part of the app extension SPPKJ file. So that will make sure that we can ignore the file because it doesn't have a meaning in this particular business scenario. We want to just package the solution and this solution is designed to be installed on a specific site. Good. So let me actually now move back on the command line and follow up again on the on the written guidance. I'm going to do a call up uh, bundle. Technically, we actually have already a bundle available because if you come from a tutorial to you already have a a trans compiled uh, JavaScript files available. But it is a relatively good practice to actually always do the bundle uh, uh, before you do package solution. So you get the latest version available of the packages. And then we want to package the solution. So let me do a call up package uh, solution. And that's going to then generate the SPPKG file. And there we go. It says that we generated an SPPKG file called app extension SPPKG to a SharePoint and solution folder. You might have actually noticed that the solution folder was also created in here. And if I extend that one, we can see the debug folder, which contains all of the files which are inside of the SPPKG file. And we do not see the client side instance there, like can be designed. And that's the SPPKG file in the file system. So what we want to do now is basically get this SPPKG file deployed to our solution. So here's my SPPKG file. And let me actually open up our tenant. So here we go. We want to test uh, that functionality in this particular site. So let's go to the app catalog. Let's go to the folder where we have the SPPKG file. Let's drag and drop the SPPKG file in. So we're getting that installed. It will now prompt uh, the trust operation first. So do we actually trust uh, the solution? Here we go. And that's for con uh, making sure that there's a confirmation by the tenant administrator or a person which has been delegated permissions to manage the app catalog to confirm that this is a customization which we want to actually take into a use. Now, one thing to notice here, we're still using the local host because we want to test the deployment logistics. We, we're not yet ready to actually get this fully packaged and hosted uh, within a tenant. So that's still pointing to the local host. So let's click deploy. So that's now fine and we're deployed. We can see that uh, there are no exceptions. Uh, it is deployed. It is not a tenant deployed, which means that we need to install this to a specific site. Good. Before we actually start then testing this on a specific site, let's go still back on the command line and let's clear the window, clean up the window and let's do call up, serve and that's that's no browser. And the reason why we do this is that because we still reference the JavaScript files from a local host, we want to have the local host uh, website running. So we're serving uh, those files from a local host. And quite often I have this small typo, uh, which is an interesting muscle memory thing, at least in my hands. So I add that additional uh, letter on the serve uh, thing. So call observe no browser. We actually start then the local host and that's now serving. Now, I think we're good to go. Let's go to the site. 
let's uh, start installing the app or adding to the site. You can do that from the gears menu in here, or you can go to the site contents and add an app from there. And here we go, and we can see the app extension, uh, client side solution. So let's click that one. And that starts the installation of the actual adding. Now, the next step is dependent again on the timeline of the time and jobs getting uh, activated. So this next step uh, or actual activation of the solution is an asynchronous operation. So this actually starts a backend process inside of SharePoint Online, a one-time executable backend process. And depending on the load of the server, it might take, and the timings, it might take one minute, it might take 10 seconds, it might take two minutes or whatever. So depending on, on where the execution is actually happening. Here we go. So that happened relatively fast. Now we can see that the, the application has been deployed and we can see that our application customizer is getting rendered on the top page and on the bottom page. And if we move between the, the pages within this uh, solution, or sorry, within the site, we can see that the extensions and placeholders are getting rendered uh, like by design uh, in our scenario. So if we're in modern page or list or site contents, everything is getting rendered like designed. And that's it uh, for this tutorial. So the whole purpose was to make sure and do the steps of testing that we got everything activated. So we got the extension activated on site level using that XML file, element XML file in the SPPKG file. So relatively simple thing, but hopefully that clarifies the simple scenario of activating uh, an extension on an existing site. On the next tutorial, we then actually do the final packaging of the solution. We configure everything to be hosted automatically in Office 365 CDN, and we make sure that everything is uh, running also without the local host being running on your local machine.